dominate three week week one here on this Sunday. I'm going to be your play by play caster for this set. Primus alongside of me, his wife Slop. How are we doing today? We are doing great. I am excited to get into this. It's been a little while since I've done some color commentary, but it should be a good one. I had two exciting yeah, teams here. We got two teams which did qualify through our bracket stage. Did last week we've got 90 10 minutes for INT for sure. White right state Raiders facing it on the red side here. As I said, it is week one. Neither team has current bronze select, but both teams did qualify to the Swiss format. Um, is there anything that you saw the Swiss format coming into the season that we should be looking out for when it comes to these two teams as we get ahead of Um, there wasn't anything I saw that stood out. Both of these look fairly strong and fairly easy. Kind of M does tend to focus mid a little bit more, um, but it's understandable. They've got a really good mid laner, and so you know you always want to play around your strong strong sides, work around that. Like, it starts off immediately with the Singer ban from right stayed right Raiders if they realize that he's a very good player. <laughs> yeah, there's always a couple different strategies you can go with when it comes to some bands. You can target who you believe has shallower champion pools, or you can target more the stronger picks, taking away their signature picks, so that you're boosting them down on their comfort list, so they lower level, better chance out here. I'm waiting on the last band to come through. So far we have Ezreal Jackson walk me in mighty minutes. Syndra, Nunu, and yeah, pretty standard bands. Um, Nunu, you don't see too, too much, but he is pretty strong and pretty solid pick. Um, to just blind pick. First pick, Clyde coming in. Very strong laner. Has a lot of good matchups at the current meta. Instantly respond with the Caitlyn Morg. Really dominant lane. Um, that is pretty safe as well. Yeah, the Caitlyn Morgana lane is pretty infamous in both competitive play and solo. Just the sheer amount of lane pressure this lane is inherently able to put out. Fine land, you get trapped, you get headshotted 11,000 times, and all of a sudden you have no age bar left. And Morgana coming in and hitting the enemy. So the gang's off is how to shut down the kid with that flash she inherently has to play less aggressive in lane die ramp for spades drive pick coming in right state we have pled hecker and kaisa coming in for tiny minutes versus kid got it and drive it inside of state very strong picks coming in from both sides both team picking up Good early game picks, plus good fighting. Yeah, both these teams are looking solid. The Garvin pick is really going to help with that engage. Like you were saying, Caitlyn can be a little bit vulnerable to ganks um, once he doesn't have flash, and Hecarim really, really loves to gank, really loves to put that pressure on. It'll be interesting to see where they start to focus around this map, because um, if they can start to neutralize this Caitlyn Morgana lane to prevent them from getting ahead, it can be really good. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what's going to come in during the second phase of picks here to round out these two team compositions, because they can really either go a per phase on each side here, because they've got a very strong core built sides here. Yeah, the Pantheon matchup is pretty interesting into Clyde. Clyde doesn't have too much mobility, so it is pretty easy to just block all of his damage. 
focuses W on you. Um, but then again, Pantheon can be flexed in mid lane, depending on if that matchup is better for him. Pantheon is a pretty strong champion right now. Um, he does still fall off a little bit, but he's definitely incredibly strong in the early. Yeah, right state's comp is looking very scary. It definitely screams dive everywhere and dive off it. Pantheon being able to tank up turret while Jarvan and Ori can just bolt in and do a lot of damage is going to be very scary and very difficult to play against. It's going to really depend on how good I need 10 minutes vision can be to keep their lane safe and good use of the quirky package to prevent any. Yeah, the biggest thing that you that I need 10 minutes we didn't need to keep in mind is just the uh, cro the cross map uh, sky falls and turrets are starting to fall down where it get in behind you and you don't have that much space to maneuver to try to get around it or you go into the enemy team and if you kite backward you go directly into him which is exactly what he wants you to do so that's something that I am curious to see how the side of I need 10 minutes to play around it because I played against Pantheon in the jungle in BO5 recently and we had a fair bit of problems dealing with cross cross map stuff the cross map ulties in the mid to late game which a lot we can stick out they're able to rotate so extremely quickly to have um, always have the ability to collapse with that one with the pantheon ult is faster yeah pantheon ult can be incredibly great for getting around the map and really helping those team fights it'll be interesting to see how the side lanes play out and just how those matchups end out Corky with package and Pled with ult both both also have a really good engagement distance but it'll be interesting to see just where that pressure ends up going for the side of Bright State, they do have to be a little bit careful with Pantheon because he does go in too far. It can be a little bit difficult because their team fight is very, very combo y, and if, if they aren't in that combo all at once, they're not there, or one person gets picked, it can be really difficult. It's always a concern whenever you're running things like the German Oriana combo, and you're very reliant upon that combo getting into the back line and hitting multiple targets that happen, kind of generally lack damage because you're wasting two major cooldowns plus with Cataclysm Shockwave on to say only one target, and especially with the side of ID 10 when everyone besides the Braum is realistically a threat to your team. And as good as Morgana is at healing so it's incredibly difficult for her to both a Kled and her because they both go unstoppable when they look at the age of their ult. Yeah, definitely. Um, definitely. I need 10 minutes team comp is really just kind of run at you um they don't have too too much appeal aside from braum ultimate so they don't really have anything to counteract the um the, the combo from right state so it pretty much just becomes a, a situation where the team fights devolve into who can who can burst who first because if they can get 
that Jarvan or the Ori and then they lack the damage from inside the right state, um, it can it can really start to go right for them. Or wrong for them. Fun unintended. Maybe slightly. Well, I would... <laughs> what I would agree is, well, to some extent, like, to branch off further, is that this, this game, I feel like, will come down to whoever is consistently able to pick their point. Welcome back, everyone. After that short delay, we are back here for game number one between I Need 10 Minutes versus Wright State Raiders. We do have a slight little update. 
that we do need to provide you. It was not Corky mid lane coming in for I need 10 minutes. It was actually the Vagar in the mid lane to update you guys on that. But it looks like we're going to see a pot little potential invade coming in from the side of Bright State. But with the defensive five point setup coming in from 10 minutes, I don't think they're going to get anything other than some deep vision. Yeah, that was a very interesting invade. They saw the Braum uh, there, but still decided to commit to it and just get the ward down. That ward should be able to st start out or spot out Hecarim, starting out as red rather, but that's pretty standard for Hecarim anyway, so not sure why they committed so hard to it. Yeah, it's a little weird. I mean, especially because you're essentially just trading vision in the end, as we do see... Uh... Macne going in for the trade ward on the enemy team red buff so both junglers are going to know where the other's starting it's going to be interesting to see how that plays out with that being said let us give you guys a quick introduction of the two of the teams who will be casting here today we have for the blue side for i need 10 minutes we have never ends in the top lane big z's in the jungle Macne, sehun in the mid lane on Vagar, and then Karn and Depressed Artist down in the bottom. Yeah, and for the side of... Oh, jeez, I didn't change the in-game. For the side of Wright State Raiders, we have Pepe the Frog in the top lane, Hippo in the jungle, Centric in the mid lane, and Valkyrie and Sweet Potatoes rounding out the bot lane. Ooh, we are going to see a level 2 fight. Flash! Oh, Flash Binding coming in from sweet potatoes right on point there so very nice coming out of him they get the cheesy lane game oh pepe the frog that is not a fight you win my friend as it's a trade kill going back to never ends in the top lane that's a solo kill coming in for the club yeah that was an interesting fight for pantheon um cled with w level two is a very scary champion um i'm not sure that that was the best idea but, you know what? It happens. It's early game. Pantheon's a new champ. Still getting used to him. It's all understandable. It's understandable, but that does not make it acceptable coming in here. But Hippo doesn't get punished for doing that cheeky level 2 gank into the bot lane as Big C's just looks to just do a standard full clear coming in from his side. Going to be curious to see whether Hippo's going to look to try to swing top lane here as it looks like both jungles are going to be pathing for a potential gank in the area. Neither knows the other is there. Let's see what plays out here. Ooh, face check from Pepe onto Big Z's, but Hippo is here with double buffs. Does get a double knockup. Stun does lay down to never ends. Who is going to get the dismount? A lot of damage coming on to Pepe the Frog. Both top players are going to end up dive. Conquer is proc for Big Z's. He's going to do so much damage. Is not going to be able to get in range before the flag and drag comes in for Hippo. So it's a one for one trade with both top laner dies. However, Never Ends still has a solo. Yeah, definitely that is beneficial for Never Ends. He definitely got the best end of it between having um, getting the kill in the 2v2 and getting TP still up uh, with the wave pushing. So he might not even need to use it yet. It'll definitely. Uh, start to snowball this top lane and can be very problematic if it's not responded to Yeah, basically the only way I see Pantheon gets back into this lane is if he's able to farm another 500 gold or so so he can get early ninja tabbies That will at least allow him to mitigate the main point of Kled's damage Which is going to be the voracious strikes I believe it's the, or vicious strikes is the name of his W Lots of trading in the mid lane from Centric is going to eat a lot of minion damage on the way out, though. But that's where a large portion of Kled's damage is. And with the Ninja Tabbies reducing bait auto attack damage, it makes it a lot easier for him to potentially trade back up into that top lane. Akarim's back in this um, top lane. <laughs> yeah, Pepe is going to get knocked back, but there is no CC as the uh, Barrow Trap on a rope did miss on that initial play from Never Ends does give them a little bit more lane control up in that top lane here. Pepe, you need to be super careful. It's going to interrupt the back, though.
Yeah, definitely interesting. Hecarim's still <laughs> top lane. These junglers really love this. But another double knock of plans. Big Z should fall to one more auto from Hippo. But the pressure on to Pepe the Frog is going to force Hippo to disengage. He still has that Cocker Pump. is still doing a lot of damage. He lands the EQ onto Hippo, but he gets the level 6 and the rebound coming in from Never Ends. And this is going to be a, a sad, sad day for Hippo as that level 6 for Big Z turns around this 2v2. And this early game is being disastrous for the side of Wright State. Yeah, that that really hurts. That that's just there's not much to say except that's really unfortunate. Um, that was very well played by um, the side of ten minutes with how it started out. Um, but that's just one of those situations you look back on. It just it hurts. Yeah, because that pretty much signals that Pantheon is not going to be a relevant champion in this game. Outside of maybe being a cutoff ulti on the backside, he's not going to be a relevant damage threat to the side of ID 10 minutes, considering how drastically far behind is. He does still have the minion weight advantage, but with four kills onto the clay, who already has a TM at, that is not a happy place you want to be in. Um, mid lane is going well for the side of right state so they do have that advantage but bot lane is actually being relatively even so far as never ends is going to go back in onto pepe uh it's just going to be way too much damage coming in from this cled you do have some mitigation from the panthony but it's just not enough this cled is just so far ahead at this point yeah this cled is up 1.1k gold which is the entire lead off here comes that Z. Ooh, nice have. binding a really great binding for Morgana there. But she gets stunned up and forces Caitlyn to heal. Ooh, Karn's eating a lot of trade damage. They do not have a defensive summoner. Another bind. Ending Knight into the trap. And that's just... That's just the pain of playing against Caitlyn Morgana. Yeah, that, that lane is incredibly frustrating. I mean, one wrong step, one binding, and you're instantly dead. There's not much you can do about that outside of... Um, wishing you didn't have to face such an oppressive lane. Jarvan is... Yeah, there are t uh, yeah, Jarvan is going to look to try to start this Ocean Drake. It would be a very strong pickup for their team. Um, pretty much everyone on their team will benefit from that because it'll allow them to scale just fine into the mid-game. Pepe the Frog is just... Pepe just needs to not leave his tower. <laughs> That's what he needs to do. Uh, ultimate is available for Big Z, but probably a better idea just to let the Ocean Drake go. Save it for a playmaking because you really need to try to do something in this mid lane to try to get some more gold onto the Vagar. Pepe is going to get get engaged on under the tower. Is going to live barely, but no, the pocket pistol comes in to get the last shot as that's another solo kill. Two never ends. And if you're the side of right state, you really need to look to try to trade advantages to somewhere on the other side of the map because this cled is 100% out of control and there's not much you can do to stop it. Yeah, this cled is becoming, well, not even becoming, he is very scary right now. Um, and Jarvik going Cinder Hulk is going to really make ganking cled not a very viable option. Oh, uh, that's just a dead Braum. Yeah, I, there's nothing you can do about that. It, it just hurts. Yeah, without flash available, Morgana having level 6, she gets free flash ulti, and you just don't get to play the game. Because then you get binded, then you get trapped, and then you just cry a little on the inside. So, right now the advantage is on the bot side of the map for the side of Bright State versus the advantage at its top side right now. It's, the question is is whether or not the Caitlyn and Morgana can transition their advantage into getting turret plates down, into rotating around the map, and continuing their siege. Because otherwise, this Kled's just going to run them down consistently. Big Z is coming in the middle. Oh, nice use of the ultimates coming in from Never Ends. But we do have an engage coming in for the bot. Car going in with the killer instinct. Is able to secure the kill onto the Morgana. Pepper the Frog did come in into the mid lane. Gets pulled back by... Bear Trap on the rough, that's going to be another kill, and Valkyrie is going to die as well, as that is a double kill of the bot lane. It's 10 minutes, then 
Ten minutes, it's time to turn up the heat, boys. Yeah, absolute disaster from the side of Wright State Raiders. Decent play from Oriana. She did overextend a little bit, but, I mean, Hecarim using his ult excellently to, you know, be unstoppable and just completely dodge the shockwave. There's not much Oriana can do. Flood flashing on her as well. She, she was very much dead. And then the bot lane, Caitlyn Morgana, overstaying for turret plating and losing in the 2v2 is really, really rough. Kaisa is now yeah. ahead in gold of Caitlyn, which is not what you want. And it's not even close, because it's a 20 CS, it's a 400 gold advantage. All of that from the 20 CS difference, because, well, yes, the Braum has died three times, but he's been the only one who's died. The Kaisa has been able to survive all this time in the laning phase, and you have an 8-1 clad who's going into lethality. This is going to be a terrifying clad, and that depressed artist is definitely a depressed artist. For this game because I'm pretty sure he's seen more gray screen than he has seen League of Legends team than he has played in League of Legends this game. Yeah, it's always a rough feeling when you're 80% of your team's deaths, but at the same time, he's not worth much anymore, so all these kills they're getting on him are not not helping this gold lead at all much. Ooh, the binding does Ooh, land. That's... That is a dead Kaisa. Yeah, didn't have the didn't have any way to use the killer instinct to try to get out. Pepe is just dead. We don't. There's nothing to see here. That this Kled wow. is so fed, he's building lethality because he knows he can get away with it. And this should be a dead Vagar. Yep, Centric does get a kill back in the mid lane, but first tower is gonna fall a juicy 600 gold onto this Kled. I want to do a quick check, see what the gold number is for that Kled. That gold, that Kled is currently sitting at 7,000 gold at 12 minutes. Yeah, he currently has a almost, or over 4,000 gold lead on his laner, which is really, really difficult to deal with. <laughs> He's about 2k gold above everyone else in the game, and he is unstoppable right now. Yeah. It's just a very unfortunate set. Of circumstances coming in for the side of right state is you essentially have one side of the map who is basically the equivalent of Dyrus at Worlds in season four, I think that was, or may have been season five, where uh, he just didn't get to play the game of League of Legends because that's essentially what Pepe the Frog is at right now with how far this credit cled is ahead of him. Bugsy's getting closer and closer to his Triforce power spike. We have Drake spawning here soon. And with Never Ends rotating down to this bot side of the map, I do not think the side of Right State can feasibly contest this Drake when it spawns. I'm not sure they'll they... be able to either, but we'll have to see. Here come Never Ends is coming in on the flank. They did have a nice initial engage. So much damage being traded back for. Big Z's is here going directly into the back line, immediately taking out the Pantheon. Gets a huge fear from the ultimate killer instant coming in on the backside, trying to get. The kill onto him, the sweet potato is all by himself, and he gets turned into some sweet potato pie, as it's going to be a bot lane tower and a drake over to 10 minutes. Yeah, the Vagar did a great job of um, zoning off the Oriana there so that she couldn't follow up. He did die for it, but it was a valiant effort and really helped them win that team fight. Yeah, just a very, very strong series of events. They did have a great initial attempt at the play using the Grand Skyfall coming in from the side of right state. But the issue is, is they're just so far behind in gold. The Pantheon can't last long enough. The, they can't assemble all the pieces of Exodia properly with the Orianna not being th there on top of it, that it's it just turned what could have been a good play to a unmitigated disaster for the side of right state here. But it is still early in the game. There's still time for them to get their item timings and when you look, and as we said earlier, a lot of the gold coming in from I Need 10 Minutes is onto the, onto the Kled. And if they can find fights where Kled is not there, they have a small chance of making good things happen. Yeah, this Ori is getting a lot of damage. With Kled going first item Ghost Blade, he is really squishy, so he still can definitely get bursted down in team fights. Um, it just depends if they can get all their pieces working together. You know, we've gotten Oriolts, 
We've gotten J4 ultimates, but we haven't gotten them together and haven't really had any decisive moments from the side of Wright State Raiders yet. Yeah, there's still a lot of League of Legends left to be played here, as that is a large chunk of damage on the card. Probably going to see Rift Herald drop here momentarily in the favor of 10 minutes. We'd like to see them break this last outer tower in the mid lane and look to push the tempo of this game and kind of foresaw any potential uh, scaling opportunities that could come in here. As that's another chunk of damage. This is going to be a 2v1 in the bot lane. We are going to see Troll Shackles come in. Nice slash from Sweet Potatoes is going to stop the charge from getting him away. But never is just like, okay, I'll just fight this out. He still has a lot of damage on this Kled as Depressed Artist is going to die. But Card is going to go in trying to get the burst out. Oh, that killer instinct to dodge the EQ was so sexy. Grand Sniper is going to come in to secure the shutdown. On to Never Ends, but overall it's a one-for-one -one trade across the map but that shutdown certainly makes Pepe feel a little bit better about this game yeah that shutdown definitely is important Garvin was unable to stop the herald charge there in the mid lane but they might be able to just kill it yeah they are they can still potentially kill it, but the bind in trap lanes is gonna buy a little time but car comes sweeping in from the side ghost is activated for big z sweet potatoes it's pretty much choosing his poison at this point. Maybe he could possibly secure a kill back here, but no. Big Z is going to secure the kill. Rift Herald is pushing. Never ends. Is going in with the Ghost Blade, trying to get out onto Pepe the Flock with the Titanic Hydra doing so much damage. They are going to get another charge off, but they're not going to be able to secure the tower on this push. Yeah, that was a definitely a great play from the side of 10 minutes. Able to get that last outer turret, really start to open up the map. Uh, interesting choice of, uh, Braum Ultimates there. Yeah, sometimes you just need a <laughs> insurance disengage, you know? Make sure they're not doing anything. Yeah, but I need 10 minutes with a little bit out of position. They have no Braum Ult for disengage. Hippo is going to go in. Karn is here. He does not have the Killer Instinct quite available yet. Sun is going to land on the card. Depressed Artist is going to do a good job getting into the way. Braum... Custom Flows is going to come in and proc on to him. While on the other side, Centric trying to get in position. is going to get the shotgun to secure the kill. On to Depress Artist, but Magnate is here. Has full HP, has a Glacial Augment. Stun, uh, Knockup is going to land. So much damage coming in. Primordial Blitz is going to secure. Card swooping into the back line, trying to get an assassination off, but doesn't get the isolated damage. And now he's all by himself. One more auto is going to secure the kill, as it's another shutdown going over to right state but that one going over to hippo not the target you really want it to be going on here never ends almost has the remount here trying to bait out that extra little bit of damage big z trying to go in on to hippo is going to interrupt the flag and drag a lot of damage being traded back and forth between these two junglers but big z is just going to do so much damage he tried to get the concup tried to get the cataclysm off to buy him a little bit of time but the shell shackles is going to come in as never ends once again is going to fall with this kill going over to valkyrie yeah, um, overall at the result, currently just a one for one. Um, after that second re engage, there is a teleport coming in from Kaisa. Not sure Are if she'll sure be able to. It was just the it. second re engage and not like the fourth or fifth at that point. <laughs> yeah, it was a very extended fight for. Took a, took a little bit of time. Um, but Kaisa does burn TP there, looking for kills. So that's another summoner that's down. Over in the side, that's probably more beneficial for. Right State Raiders getting all those shutdowns onto people. Aside from Hacker Room, he's still got a lot of gold in his pockets. Yeah, he is one very happy pony right now in terms of his gold advantage. Advantage. Oh, Shockwave is going to come in on the Q on a map. Nate. It is going to get blocked. The hit ultimate is going to get blocked here. The Grand Skyfall is going to come in. Big Z's is not in position to make a play, so it is just a free pick. Coming in from right state, and right state still showing some life. The gold lead has shrunk and spiked up to about 6k. It's currently down over to 4k, but there's still a lot of damage on the table coming in from the side of 10 minutes. Blue team is going to steal. The Infernal Drake never ends in the back line doing so much damage. Does not have charge. Is being used to disengage. The press artist trying to get out of range. EQ should almost be available for him. Snipe coming in. 
from the spear. Karn, Karn is a little bit out of this. It does get a little bit of time. Big Z and Never Ends dive into the back line, leaving their AD carry out to drive, but they're doing so much damage on the back side of the fight, but there's just not enough as it's oh, essentially a clean ace coming in from right say at the dragon pit but they did lose the dragon but they get a whole lot of kills yeah they did essentially get the ace killing vagar and then later in the 5v4 killing everyone else hecarim was able to steal that dragon which feels pretty bad um but i think they'll be happy with that result got a lot of shutdowns starting to close this gold lead um it's looking pretty pretty good for the side of right state raiders yeah, they've clawed their way back into the game bit by bit here. And unfortunately, the side of 10 minutes hasn't been able to push the, their aggression at the times they need to to continue to make sure they had this advantage going properly. And they kind of died for no reason a lot of times, giving over a lot of free gold when they didn't even need to be putting themselves into that position. Yeah, 10 minutes is taking this a little bit like a solo queue, kind of just constantly fighting and going for everything that's available. Um, it would definitely suit them for the better if they were able to just, you know, go other places sometimes and just be fine with giving up objectives for the sake of not falling or not letting the other team get a lot of gold back. Um, but they're still in the driver's seat. They still have the gold lead. They're still a very scary team right now. Yeah, they do have a very nice potential flank opportunity coming in for Never Ends. They are at a very strong point in the game right now. They have a mountain, they have a Kaisa. They can blow Baron up off the map. It looks like they're just going to perform a map side trade. They're going to give up their mid tier one and they're going to try to take this tier two in the top lane, but they are going to go for a little bit of a turn time onto Pepe the Frog. There is going to be a lot of damage going on to him, but the E buys a lot of time, so it's a tier one for tier two trade across the map, but can there be a clean distance? A Shoal Shackles is going to come in Big Z, but here comes the charge. Shockwave only lands on a depressed card. It's never, never ends. Is in the middle of the team fight. Big Z's in the back line trying to live for as long as he can. Is going to fall on the backside to Sweet Potatoes, but Card's going to get blown up by Valkyrie. Nice EQ coming in. Never ends. Eats up the cape. Ace in the hole coming in on the backside. They're still trying to get away, but there's so much chance potential. That's going to be another kill with the with the QW coming in from the Oriana. It looks like they're going to attempt to do the Baron. There is still a lot of damage left available. Oh, they walked right into the blind. That's going to be a dead Fagar. That's potentially a Baron coming in for the side, but a TP is coming in on their side to try to accelerate this down, and there's no TPs up for any significant members. That is going to be Baron over to right state. Yeah, unless Braum can get lucky here with a Q or something. Don't see it happening. No. Braum is in a very scary position now. Doesn't have much health. I, he might I, just I be mean, dead. If you, if you want to, yeah, he's just dead. Gives it over to Oriana. I mean, I somehow stole Baron against a Nunu as a Morgana with my Q, so... Yeah, it definitely happens sometimes. Um... <laughs> it, it's not... It's not entirely unexpected, but... It, it, it's certainly something that you don't expect to see happen. Right State putting on a whale of a comeback after a pretty much disastrous early game coming in from them, evening up the gold... Gold. Both teams sitting at just about 45,000 right now, but you still have to say the pressure advantage with the way the map is right now is still in the favor of 10 minutes as long as they're able to saw out this bear buff without giving up too much. Yeah, this Oriana is looking incredibly scary. She does have the most game or most gold of anyone in the game currently. Um, is putting in a lot of work alongside the Caitlyn and Morgana. They're really, really carrying these team fights and putting in the damage they need to get their comp rolling. Yeah, this Orion is really hit, starting to hit some big, big item timings coming in here. Kaylin going for the triple, the triple crit rather than going for the Essence Reaver, um, which you've been seeing a lot of Kaylin's going for, going with the double Zier. So, um, I disagree with taking a dragon here um, because you are just wasting precious 
Baron time, I mean, you're still going to get at least one tower right here. Um, the question is, is whether or not you're going to be able to push to, for two towers because there is still a lot of engage on the side. But they are going to try to go in. Nice prom ultimate's going to buy a little bit of time. A lot of damage goes on to the tank. Grand Skyfall is going to come in, but Pepe the Frog is all by himself. A lot of damage got put on to some crucial members of 10 minutes. They should be able to effectively get this tower down here, coming in from the side of Riot State. So they got two towers. They still have about 30-ish seconds left of this Baron. Hippo gets the gauge on by Big Z, but that's the t full tank Jarvan. You're not going to kill him instantly. Yeah, really good fight there from Wright State. They didn't even kill anyone, but just just because of the pressure they put on, they were able to get those turrets off of it. They will heal up decently off this Ocean Drake, but Pantheon is in a little bit of danger. Yeah, he does have the Guardian's Angel, so it's, it's going to be quite a bit of time. They are going to lose a mid-tier 2 for going for this play. but So that's going to be a large chunk of gold coming in for the side of Right state as I do believe they sh nope they're just gonna use the disengage here rather than pressuring for that tier two tower so out uh, in total off the Baron they get two towers in an ocean drain which does give them a solid gold advantage and Jarvan decides it's his red buff apparently yeah interesting to see him take the red buff there um, definitely. Not the most optimal accident, play, but, but yeah, yeah, it, it it can be, but you know, your ADC can kill it good enough. You don't gotta help them. You got other camps to clear. Uh, I just want to say hashtag 420 in the chat for uh, big RAP right now. Hmm. That is definitely a nice number. <laughs> Always love those. Jarvan's face uh -oh, checking. Hippo's going to face check. TP is going to come in from Never Ends, but that is one tanky Jarvan. Huge shockwave coming in on the backside. Is going to take out Karn. Their consistent damage AD carry is down. Valkyrie is re hitting on the backside. They're going to try to get some CC onto Big Z, but they're not able to do so. Magne is going to flash over the wall to his death. Death as it's a two for one trade in the end. Jungler for the excuse me, three for one in the end, with all the carries on the side of 10 minutes off the map here and plenty of time to siege coming in from the side of right state. Yeah, that Orianna shockwave there really, really put in work, really did a lot of damage. Um, it didn't kill the Kaiser right outright, but it, it chunked her so, so darn low that she couldn't really do anything to the rest of the team fight. Yeah, she was pretty much out of the fight at that point. They do break the base off that play. They have Baron spawning in about a minute. That's going to be their next go-to objective. Easy. They need to get their vision set up and look to just continue to set up these strong team fights because 10 minutes really hasn't shown any semblance of having a team fight advantage despite how massive their Clud got in the early game, because their Clud was, at one point, 9-1, I'm pretty sure. He has now gone 1-5. Yeah, he, he was 9-1. Um, speaking of Clud, I'm not a big fan of his build. Um, the only one of his items I really like is the Titanic Hydra. Even against this team... Um, with the Oriana and the Morgana, I feel like Merc Treads would be better. And then, you know, just standard Black Cleaver character or something to give you a little bit of health so you don't get instantly bursted. Um, it would probably be beneficial because your your main role is to just kind of ult into the enemy team, um, kind of cause some chaos and maybe kill some people. If you just instantly die when you go into their team, you can't really do your job and it becomes a 5v4 against your team that is really difficult to win. I can understand to some extent the Yoma's Ghost Blade, you're really far ahead, you're wanting to snowball, but I still think you should always be getting hysterics in every game as a clan. Like Black Cleaver I can kind of understand because they really don't have a true tank. Yeah, I can understand the um the 
not getting Black Cleaver, and ooh, engage here maybe. Coming in, a nice glacial fish just gonna buy a little bit of time. Double shockwave coming in onto the support and support and mid laner Karn is by himself has to has to ulti over the wall to escape. Big Z is gonna get stunned up into the knockup, into the trap, into the binding, as that is just one dead pony that should be immediate rotation for the Baron. And I do believe most likely this is gonna be end up leading to a game victory for Wright State. Yeah, definitely should be able to um, after uh, after a reset off of this. They do send Pantheon to get the Mountain Drake, which will definitely help for their sieging with Baron. It's just, this has been a very interesting game. Um, I'm not sure how else to describe it besides interesting. Um, you could call it a fiesta, you could call it a siesta, you could call it... Um... Solo Q League of Legends, like there's plenty of terms you can use for it. <laughs> yeah, I was I was gonna call it a fiesta, but you know I'm trying to keep the flame down since all these players are higher ranked than me. <laughs> so I'm I'm not trying to flame them too hard, but there's some there's been some interesting <laughs> interesting plays made in this game to say the least. Yeah, and I kind of disagree with Karn going for the Storm Razor build that's really fallen out of favor. As pretty much every Kaisa I've seen has been going the Man Immune build. Um, like, I can understand he got a free farm landing phase, was able to back and get the BF sword, but... I just feel like the Storm Razor is just such a terrible item right now in terms of spikes. And that AP Kaisa is just in a so much stronger spot than AD Kaisa is right now. Yeah, especially when you have a fed Clyde on your team and you have a Hecarim. I think that extra AP damage would really help to kind of mix up their damage profile. Because um, right now, their only AP threat is Vagar, and he's not outputting that much damage. Yeah, he's really not possessing those uh, high AP number items quite yet. So he, he's he's not full scary Vagar yet. And he's still sitting at about 450, I want to say, for AP. But he's still a long way from being a damage threat, to yeah. say the least. Yeah, and his damage will definitely be more delayed since he's going the Glacial um, Augment build. So he's not going to get too, too scary for a little bit. But they're just kind of running it down mid with, with Baron here. I mean, it's an open inhibitor. You can't really defend that if you're the side of 10 minutes. Um, what you do need to be careful of is making sure you're not going to get collapsed on defending this tier 2 tower. Yeah, Orianna gets a little bit caught out, but she is fine. They get this turret. Looks like they're going to be sieging for the next one here. They're pretty much... Oh, Jarvan just jumps in. Engage is going to come in, but it's only on to the big tanky attacker from Glacial Fisher. It's going to be massive as well as the Hecarim ulti as they just trade... Frontliner, so Event Horizon is going to buy a little bit of zone control, but there's just too much damage at this stage of the game on the side of right step. Hippo goes, Hippo goes into the GA, is going to flash out of the Event Horizon. TP is going to come in for Pepe the Frog, is going to be able to secure them this inhibitor, and right State's just been executing so much better in these team fights. Yeah, right State has really played this game well has really kept their mental in check to not uh, tilt off that early early plays that went wrong for them. Kaisa does get a kill here. Not yeah, sure he, how much he, more she'll be able to clean Karn up. does get one kill. Flash is going to come in from Never Ends, but he just is so squishy. Oh, Shockwave almost just one-shots Kaisa. Centric is going to barely live from the ice hook. Isolated Q. Big Z, you know he wants to get on top of that Orianna to get the kill, but the game is going to end here with Wright State securing the victory in about 35 minutes. Game one goes to the Raiders. Yes, it does. And in what decisive fashion, apart from early game that went wrong, a couple unlucky moments with that fight top lane with the level up and the remount, um, Wright State looked pretty strong in this game. It looked pretty darn scary. Yeah, their team fighting was just significantly better than what we were sawing from 
10 minutes who had very strong early game performances from the top lane, from the jungle, getting themselves ahead. However, when it came to team fights, it's, I just felt like the side of 10 minutes was never on the same page when it came into the team fights in terms of how they wanted to execute team fights, what they wanted to do, because they almost never initiated team fights on their own terms. They were always secondary engaging. And as I said, for the game, this game is going to come down to whichever team chooses the fights. And throughout the entire game, the team that was choosing the fights were right state. Yeah, definitely right. Th- you were definitely right there. Um, I need 10 minutes, like I was saying earlier, doesn't really have much appeal. So right state raiders able to just jump on them, able to get their damage in and just kill them. Go from there. Yeah, it, it, there's still quite a few things that can be changed on both sides going into the next game. Um, I'm going to be curious to see how teams react to the side switch uh, and how and to see how this game ends up playing out here because that was a very interesting first game because it was a pretty much a tale of two segments of the game. The first 15 minutes was pretty much all 10 minutes. And then the rest of the game, it was just right state picking their fights properly, getting good shockwaves off onto priority targets. And the side of 10 minutes were never able to deliver the Kaisa into the back line to get a potential assassination off onto the Kaelin, onto the Oriana, which is really how they had a chance to win. Yeah, right state for the side of them. I'd like to see them play a little bit safer in the early game. They definitely have strong team fights and they know what they're doing. They just need to, you know, wait and be prepared and take, um, not give away anything they don't need to. For the side of I need 10 more minutes, or 10 minutes rather, they definitely looked strong in the early game. They just need to work on pressing their advantages and knowing when to commit to fights. Um, with that being said, we are going to head into a quick break, but we will see you back here in a few minutes for game two.
Take a moment right here Feeling like a sound gear Driving towards the sun With a rose and a gun Feel the wind in my hair Going nowhere I swear Like an outlaw on the run Dangerous but it's so fun Running Our lot. And welcome back everyone to game number two between the right state Raiders and I need 10 minutes. I am once again Primus alongside Wildstar. We're back here bringing you the second game of this best of three series. Bright State taking the first game in a very back and forth game here coming in. How you feeling about how you feeling coming into this game? I'm feeling excited. It should definitely be a good game. Um, right State Raiders did swap sub out their top laner. They're subbing in Arrowman1256 because Pepe cannot play this game due to other circumstances. Definitely not because of tilt. It's just in timing. <laughs> yeah, it just happened to work out that way. We'll just leave it at that here coming in as we are already through our band phase for the first rotation. We have Syndra, Hecarim, and Kled coming in from the side of right state. While on the other side, we have Morgana, Jarvan, and Kaisa being taken away by ID Tempest. Yeah, definitely some interesting bands come. The Kled is very understandable. The Hecarim, he was a little bit of a threat, but he didn't seem to do that much, in my opinion. I need 10 minutes does decide to ban the J4 and the Kaisa. Interesting that they decide to leave up the Oriana, who to me seemed like the biggest threat on the side of right state. Yeah, I don't really know why they chose to leave up the Oriana. I mean, maybe their thought process is, is they all have a more mobile composition. Like, in terms of, like, big mobility that can avoid the Shockwave. But I, I'm still not the biggest of fans because the Oriana was, like, the biggest high-impact champion. Because you can always sub substitute other pieces in for the Jarvan to get the same effect, i.e. with the Sejuani. But you can't substitute other things in for the Oriana and have the same effects. Yeah, and having this Yumi on the side of Raid State Raiders with the Oriana is going to be incredibly scary. Whether it's the Shockwave dragging them all into the Yumi ult or Yumi keeping them in place for the Shockwave, there's definitely going to be a lot of synergy there and a lot of a lot of scariness coming out. Yeah, it's just just a very terrifying state of affairs. I'm curious to see what they're going to go with to round out their composition. Because they have a lot of great setup. They just need some strong damage to back it up. I do like the uh, Lux pick coming in because the Lux is a very strong matchup into Oriana. Because Lux, Lux's abilities always will outrange Oriana's. So that it does give them a strong... Oh god, it's the Yumi Garen. Oh gee. That is, that is terrifying. That is not so something I've you want to face against. I've actually played this bot lane with my AD carry on the team that I was playing with in that best of five. And... Uh, Let's just say he never died as Garen in the games that we played. He didn't necessarily win those games, but he never died. <laughs> yeah, Yumi Garen is a very terrifying thing to have. Um, the York pick is very interesting here. Not sure if that was a missed pick or intended. Um, it does synergize well with Sejuani, setting up for some good ganks in the top lane. But I mean, it doesn't... there's nothing in chat saying it's a missed pick, so the York is staying. That's true. It just doesn't have that much synergy with the Oriana. The Garen, however, just spinning as ever spinning on everyone as Oriana pulls them all into him, is gonna be very terrifying. I'm pretty sure though, how Right Saint wants to play this is they want to play this as a standard four-one, with the Oric playing in the side lane. And then everyone else just being a four-man squad. The only concern is Jax gets ahead of the Yorick. 
their one is not as strong as the Jax is, because the Jax is going to beat the York in terms of 1v1 fighting, but the York can still take towers. Yeah, the York does lose um, that. Well, it's pretty even as the game goes on, because Maidens do a lot of damage. Once Jax is that Spear of Shojin, it can really just block all of York's damage. Um, he's, he starts to win that side lane pretty, pretty heavily. Now the thing is, York can just kind of sit under tower and stop Jax from doing anything. Um, so it'll be interesting to see if anything actually gets accomplished in these side lanes, or if it's gonna be, I'm gonna push the wave into you, you're gonna push the wave into me, you're just gonna kind of chill. Uh, apart from that, if it is a 4v4, I definitely like the side of Wright State Raiders a lot better. Got a lot of strength. Um, and as long as Orianna doesn't get picked by the Nautilus or the Lux, they've got a lot of damage. Essentially, you have three meatballs with a cat and a mechanical woman to keep all the buffy guys alive through the damage coming in from the side of I Need 10 Minutes and just outlast them by just inherently living longer. Yeah, that's the thing with Wright State Raiders team is they don't really die very easy, especially with Yumi healing them. And I Need 10 Minutes has very, very little damage, especially in the 4v4. Outside of Tristana's auto attacks, they don't really have any instant damage. You know, Lux is going to burst, and if it doesn't kill anyone, you're, you're kind of in a rough spot. But I, I Need 10 Minutes might start to look towards the 5v5 a little more, or the 5v4 even, and just try and force fights. Yeah, essentially I see the only real ways they are able to do anything in these team fights is if they pick one of the meatballs off when they're not fully set up as the foreman. Because the Yumi is just literally going to stay inside one of the tanks, so the likelihood of you being able to pick her off is quite small. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, um, Wright State Raiders doesn't have much siege. Um, and, I mean, their wave clear is okay enough, but they don't have much siege, so the, in the 4v4, they're not going to really accomplish it. Um, and neither is I Need 10 Minutes, because they might just lose fights in them. Um, and the side lanes gonna kind of be even as well so it'll be really interesting to see if anything actually happens in the game or if we're just gonna wait for someone to miss step and get a good team fight i hope we don't see that because that is not those are never fun games to cast <laughs> it's just two teams staring at each other and waiting for the other to blink here but as you said both teams have ways of winning the game but you have to like what Wright State is putting together a little bit more here as we are going to head into another short break here as we are waiting for our spectator play to wind down. We will be back with you guys in just a couple minutes with some more Warrior Sleep Legends action.
and welcome back everyone to the second game of this best of three match between the Wright State Raiders and I need 10 minutes. We had Wright State pull off a very convincing comeback in game number one here, but both teams decided to throw a couple curveballs at us to say the least with these two team compositions and we're not entirely sure on how we, how this game's going to play out. Let's just leave it at that. <laughs> Yeah, this game is gonna be gonna be very interesting. It might be a little bit slow paced, um, but we'll, we'll see. Cause these this game can snowball very quickly for either side. Yeah, cause if the side of ten minutes is able to set up their sieges in multiple lanes and push the side of right state around the map, they have a lot of potential to take over this game and not allow right state to do what they want to do, which is have a bunch of meatballs running it down your throat. <laughs> yeah, I mean, as long as they don't have a bunch of meatballs running it down their throat, they, they should be should be fine. That's interesting wording. Um, but <laughs> pretty standard starts from both teams, both starting bot lane, just getting leashes um, from their bot laner. Top lane does fake the leash, um, so. They may be a little confused as to where that went, where Sejuani started, but aside from that, everything is pretty standard so far. Yeah, one of the things I am going to be curious about is, uh, ooh, we are going to see a little bit of a trade. Potatoes, you got to be a little bit more respectful on that, Yumi. <laughs> you can't just float around, especially against the Nautilus. Yeah, he just kind of walked up there and said, I dare you to hook me. And they didn't yeah, really have a response. But, but, so, for those who don't know, essentially how the Garen Yumi lane works is the Yumi essentially goes uh, Athena's Unholy Grail and then goes straight AP. They go into Luna's Echo into Death Cat after getting Athena's because Athena's is just such a strong item on Yumi. And is still the strongest support item in the game. So, like, essentially, like, Yumi becomes a second AP threat with the amount of damage that she has on her Q, plus the plus the bonus AD that you can get. Like, there are games on Yumi where we'll hit 35 minutes into the game, and I'll be giving my AD carry 60 AD. Yeah, it, it can be a lot of AP. It can definitely be very scary, and she could definitely be a very, very strong champion. But this is probably going to be a very slow early game, as neither team really wants to do anything in the early game. Oh, but Hippo is a little bit caught out. He's going to get slowed by the Lucid Singulator. Silence is going to come in for a good chunk of damage onto Karn. Tried to greet for turret damage, but it wasn't fair play, so that was a little bit questionable to say the least. Yeah, and these this Garen Yumi lane can be very very punishing if you misstep. Once he silences you, he can't really rocket jump away. He can just do all his damage on you. Gank in the mid lane though. Yeah, we are gonna see a little bit of a gank in the mid lane. Centric is gonna eat a lot of damage, but a nice flash is going to dodge both the light binding and the lucid singularity, allowing Centric to get away. But that's both summoners down in the mid lane for Centric, and that's gonna be a very vulnerable Oriana for the foreseeable future. But we do have another gank coming in in the bottom lane. The press artist is gonna get interrupted with the dredge line by. Valkyrie, but overall he is able to get away, does have to burn the flash. So both junglers getting very successful ganks in the early game, but we'll have to see whether or not either jungler makes a return visit to either of those lanes. Speaking of return visits, Nunu in the mid lane. Oh, but in the uh, bot lane. <laughs> <laughs> Tristana. Yeah, the press artist doesn't have an escape here. But is he able to trade back? No, he's just going to fall. It's first blood over to Valkyrie on the Garen. Yeah, a little late on the heal from Karn. That is going to be upsetting to not have. Um, the 
gank from Sejuani earlier. A little bit interesting. W was aimed a little bit iffy. Um, but, you know, they did burn the flash. And in the end, it does work out for them. Not the greatest, but, you know, first blood on Garen is always good. Yeah, because that means he gets through his tanky items faster, which means he basically becomes unkillable in this lane even faster. Yeah, Garen is going to be a, a pretty strong threat if he is able to keep this lead and build it throughout the game. He is up in CS as well, which is always impressive in a ranged melee matchup. A little bit of trading in the top lane, nothing too, too dramatic. Still pretty much wet noodle fights, neither of them yeah. have any significant items yet. Yeah, it's pretty much just, uh, I'm gonna attack you a couple times, you're gonna attack me a couple times, and then we're just gonna go back to farming. Um, neither of them really wants to commit. We'll, it'll be interesting to see if Jax decides to jump on him from the bush, but he decides just to walk out instead. Uh, yeah, keep farming. He's too close to the tower. He can't really risk drawing turret aggro because if you draw turret aggro at this stage of the game, like, there's enough damage with Maiden available on the Yorick that you will just die if you take turret aggro at that HP for the Jax. But both of them have hit their level 6. Both of them are online in terms of champions. It's just going to be seeing whether how these junglers are going to play around. They are playing right now on the top side scuttle crab but it looks like it is going to get secured by big Z. yep nunu should have this one pretty clear he's got his q unless oriana can take it away he is unable to and now oriana's in a scary position yeah it does have shockwave is going to get the shockwave from disengage but has no summoner spite available but hippo is going to rotate down flash has to be burned by magne in order to ensure the escape maiden is dropped on the top lane just for lane priority. Pretty sure uh, Arrowman wants to look for a back timing here. Um, does not have enough for a sheen as I think that's what he wants to save up for in terms of back timing. Might just be looking for some deep vision. Yeah, the teleport from Garen into the mid lane there helped to disengage um, so that nothing went wrong for the side of right state. Um, it's just back to farming. Gank from Nunu here. This is going to be scary. Oh, uh, that's just a dead note. That's just a dead order. Yeah. There's not much you can do there. Sejuani's in the bot lane here. Yeah, they do not get the interrupt onto the Q. Flash is being burned. Has a lot of damage going on to Sweet Potatoes. He might end up falling to the Ignite. No, he lives with single-digit HP as a press artist. Once again, is going to fall victim. The flash being burned on the top side from Never End. As the new ball, new new snowball comes into the bot lane, as they're trying to get the CT down on both of them, Absolute Zero is going to come in into the double binding, into the final spark, and that's going to be a double kill to Matt. And they, they do get one trade kill back onto Big Z, but that is a nice rotation coming in from 10 minutes. Yeah, that was greatly executed. This Nunu has been everywhere in this early game. Always ganking, roam down from Lux as well to pick those up. They are able to get the kill back onto Nunu, which is always good. Um, and while Yorick was going for all that vision and deep warding, he also took the red buff. So he has that. Now he has enough gold for Sheen and a little bit more if he wants. So he will probably be backing relatively soon. Indeed he will. Yeah, he, yeah they're probably going to look to pick up that Sheen, potentially like something along the lines of boots. Um, just because the sh uh, Did he have enough both? Yeah, he yeah. did enough. Because the Sheen is such an important power spike for Yorick due to the power of your Q. It just makes your trading that much more impressive. It's kind of the same thought process behind Nasus picking up an early Sheen. Because once he does that, like, you can't really effectively trade back into him. Just because he has so much sustain, his Q does so much damage as a uh, cheeky little teleport be like, No! My control word! Yeah, but neither of these top laners have a TP in case a fight breaks out over this dragon. Um, right now, there's just a couple fights back and forth for vision. I need 10 minutes does control vision inside the pit, um, but right state has vision outside and around dragon. But they do face check into Nunu. 
Yeah, the Big Z is going to get the root onto both of them. Into the knockup final star. He's going to do a lot of damage. Shockwave's going to buy a little bit of time. Hippo is going to flash, but the flash absolute zero is going to secure the kill. Big Z is going to fall into a response while a heavy trade is coming in on the bot side of the map as neither side has ended up going down as Final Spark and both summers did come out from Sweet Potatoes to keep themselves alive down in the bottom lane. Yep, so across the map it ends up being a one for one, or one for zero actually, I don't believe Sejuani died. Or no, she did, yeah, no, she sorry, did. one one for one, um, both junglers died. Oh, and now the mid laner dies, or he's dead. How much you can do there? <laughs> yeah, no, is that that's the trade that I'm talking about with the uh, Sheen Q. It's just very difficult to effectively trade back. But if you're 10 minutes, you have Magne in a very strong position right now. Onto this Lux here as we are. Yeah, that's one of the things about Yorick. That's really fun. Is what you can do is you can use the Maiden to body block. Why do you block me a new snowball and just be like, okay, I can just walk away. I don't have to do anything. His excellent vision from the side of I need 10 minutes in the bottom river. They've got a lot of control wards. Right state is kind of playing in the dark right now. Yeah, they are playing in the dark, but they do have, but because the bot lane is not in position to contest any of that vision, they're going to be able to pretty much wipe away all that vision if they so choose except for they don't actually see the ward in the pit yet so 10 minutes does still have control over the pit itself but they've lost all their vision outside of them. yeah i'm not sure if that might be strategic from right state because they have a ward in that pit that isn't currently um being seen by the control ward in there i'm not sure if they're kind of trying to lure I need 10 minutes into a false sense of security or they just simply didn't see the control ward um but Sejuani used her old and didn't do didn't hit it that's just one of those situations where you throw out your R you realize you missed and then you just go back into your corner and be like okay guys I'll see you in about two minutes I'll be back yeah that, that just kind of kind of hurts Feels a little rough, but you know, just like that Yumi ultimate hurt my eyes a little bit. Yeah, Tristan is able to just jump up. Nunu is currently in the jungle. Uh, he might come around and counter gank this. Yeah, we are gonna have a the stun is going to land on to depress artist. It's gonna eat a lot of damage. Justice comes in to secure the kill. Big Z trying to do what he can. They do have the rotation coming in from from Macne here. Stun is gonna land. On to Big Z. Nice little sidestep on the Lucid Singularity, but it's not going to matter. Shockwave is going to buy a little bit more time. Hippo lived for so much longer, but the kill is going to come in from Centric. The, the Buster Shot bought a little bit of time for the Disengage coming in from Karn, but in the end, it's a one-for-one -one trade with both junglers end up falling down. Binding is going to land, but the sidestep from Centric is going to keep him alive. Yeah, Garen ran up and forced Tristan to rocket jump away, so she wasn't able to do too much damage in that fight. And it really let them just kind of turn it around and get away with a decent amount amount there. Um, as you were saying, Centric sidestepping the ult uh, keeps them alive and just makes this a pretty good play for the side of right state. Yeah, they might lose another turret play on the back side of it. Depressor has rotated back down here, but... Garen's still fairly immovable in this bot lane here, so... Uh, don't know about that choice, since he's gonna get rooted up under tower by the, uh... Final Spark, all oh, by the final chapter, as the Final Spark spells the trade kill. Oh, the Sejuani R is still gonna land onto Karn. Exhaust is gonna come in and try to do time, but there's just not enough damage between the Sejuani and the Yumi. They're gonna try to get under tower, but the Arctic Assault... Gets them away from both the light binding. Cedric has rotated down from the mid lane. He's trying to get into position on the car, but he's not going to be able to do so. The slow is going to land, but he has the jump back available and is able to get away. Yeah, Cedric definitely was a little scared there. Um, Lux did not have much mana, though. So he might have been able to just walk up and kill the Trisana and walk away. Um, in the end, though, 
not much happens. York does take Rift Herald. Um, that's gonna be scary. Just York things. Just York things. He is trading pretty heavily with Jax, and he's winning it pretty heavily. Yeah, e's it's the down. difference in it's the difference in damage output is. Jax really needs to consistently be fighting while Arrowman just wants to walk up QU and walk away as if they're going to trade flashes. Don't know if he needed to go for that though. Though, like, he already has the advantage, he has the Rift Herald, which he is dropping now to secure first tower. I'm a. No, he's not dropping it yet. Nope. He is not. Um... He was standing in the same spot, so I wasn't sure if he was using it or not. Yeah. Um, he probably could have. Jax was a little ways away for a little bit. Um, but he can kind of just TP back to lane. But Yunu is here, but Jax is very low. So as long as he doesn't TP under uh, enemy turret, he should be fine. Play in the bot lane. So is going to land on an artist. Misses the hook, so has to immediately flash as the... I'm not even gonna comment anymore on it. That, that, yeah, <laughs> these um, the Yumi ults are a little bit interesting, um, but Yumi being they leave Yumi a lot is still to be fine. Desired. Let, let's let us let us that's what I'm gonna say. Yeah, they leave a lot to be desired. Yeah, and I mean in in her defense, it is really difficult when both the bot laners have uh, mobility, but at the same time, those are some rough ults. They're they kind of hurt. Yeah, I, I, and I mean, like, I, I think part of it is that, oh, as we are going to see a fight in the top lane, Maiden is not available for Airman. He tried to get the one for one, but the absolute zero is going to secure the kill with a little bit of extra damage. Ultimate is going to land from Hippo, is going to flash in to try to get the kill, but the counter strike can come back up for never ends, and he's able to get the leap strike away as it's going to be a one for O to kill in the top lane. Yeah, that's just unfortunate. Um, luckily for Arrow Man, he did walk back to lane instead of TPing. So he still has that, but Jax's is going to be up in a second tier as well. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see. Uh, yep, there's the TP. I'd like to see him immediately Cedric just... is going to get slowed into the snowball. Should die here. I really just, as soon as your TP, I wanted to see that Rift Herald channeled. I just, he's got to use it. Um, he, he can't use it when Jax is here. Now he can. Jax stun is down. He's just going to walk up and try to not use yeah. Herald? Yeah. He... I think he's got like 30 seconds left on it. Oh, that's first turret. And they just give first turret yeah. for no reason. Ah, that's, that's really something. That's, that's really something. Um, he does get first turret now. His Rift Herald is going to expire pretty soon. Uh, I Need 10 Minutes does get uh, the Ocean Drake and is going to look to probably set up something bot here. If four in the yeah, area... he's only got about five seconds left on that. He's going to have to channel it in base. Yeah, it doesn't have much time left on it at all. That's, that's just unfortunate. He has to channel it! He, he lets it expire! No, no, he got it, he got it at the very last second. Okay. That's just... Dear Lord, Ben. <laughs> I just don't know why you committed to Gang Harold if you're not going to use it. But, uh, it's, it's, it's whatever. I, I guess, I guess it sets up them having a four-man play bot side, but, like, bot tower's not important. There's no objectives on the bot side of the map for you right now. Yeah, there's, there's not much to get. He just throws it and walks top lane. This Lux is incredibly strong right now. And this Herald might bait them into a fight if they stick around too long. Yeah, but they are going to catch out the Lux immunity. Final chapter is actually really nice, but the stopwatch is going to buy Magne a lot of time. It's going to get a massive final spark, but it doesn't hit any of the squishies. Never ends, has TP down into the bottom lane, trying to do the damage he can on the Centric as they're going to snowball this fight over as it's hot. Skip jump coming in from Karm as it's going to be a wipe in the bottom lane for the side of 10 minutes. Yeah, and Yorick just uses TP back to lane, doesn't have it. Didn't really get anything out of it either. Um, 
he isn't pushing for top lane turret. That's just a free team fight win um, and free objectives for the side of I need 10 minutes. Yeah, they only get one tower out of it, though, because they aren't looking to push into the tier two and or it's just farming jungle minions. Yeah, that was an excellent stopwatch from Lux to avoid the Ori ultimate. I think if that hit would have been a completely different fight and it was i yeah, really like the idea been... for the side of right state but just the tp advantage really um really messed them up yeah the tp the tp disadvantage plus the stopwatch just made it incredibly difficult because they needed to take the lux out of the fight instantly if they weren't able to do that they used a lot of major cooldowns and only got the kill and they didn't actually get any kills off the engage yeah, right state unfortunately did not get much done in that team fight at all. Um this I need ten minutes is setting up really good vision and is this Lux is really, really scary. Yeah, Airman does have the wall, is gonna have needs to Yeah, this top lane matchup's pretty over because he went with the Merc treads, which uh, which makes sense if he's grouping, but if he's side laning, like I feel like the ninja dab is going to do so much more work for him. Ooh, Chopper is going to land onto the to the Lux. The Lux is just going to end up falling. It's going to get final spark. It's going to live for a while as it's a 1k shutdown. Karn gets immediately ulted and it's just going to die as the as out of nowhere, just 10 minutes just chooses to try for something that they just cannot take at this point in time they do get top tower out of the side of it but that's a lot of gold that went back into the pockets of right state yeah that was a great shock wave from the side of right state um and good good fighting from them um but you know once your lux falls down and you don't have that damage you kind of just have to back out tristana rocket jumped into the team to try and kill oriana <laughs> Um, but, you know, the Sejuani ult came out and she just died. It was a little bit, a little bit rough for them. Yeah, they need to break this mid lane tower so they can start roaming around the map. But as we mentioned earlier, the competitions, their compositions not great at sieging. Oh. Like, if anyone's at the tower, they can't actually take the tower. And they're not tanky enough yet to where they can dive. Yeah, it's it's tough. They're in a really tough spot. Uh, there's not much that they can do um, aside from wait and give it time. Uh, I mean, Garen's got his spirit message completed, so he's going to be pretty tanky in the 4v4 because the only person who's really going to be doing damage to him is Tristana. Sununu's not going to be doing damage to him. The Nautilus isn't going to be doing damage. The Lux isn't going to be doing damage to him. Yeah, um, that is a good point. Um, Garen is very strong. Um, Ori isn't too terribly weak either, but this Jax is in a really good position and is really going to make these fights difficult for the side of right state. Yeah, it, it's basically dependent upon how Aramon, how deep into the rabbit hole Aramon wants to get in terms of split push because... Once Jax completes that Spear of Sojin, it's pretty much impossible for him to win the side lane fight. Unless he gets, like, maybe Death Stance. Maybe he can win the side lane 1v1. Good. Oh, it's going to land onto the Lux. Final Spark, Final Chapter, and the All Shockwave are going to be really nice under Tower. Absolute Zero is trying to buy a Disengage coming in. Is going to do a whole lot of damage. Karn wants to try to get into position to jump into the back line, but that's just a free kill onto Lux. But the health bars are all low onto Right Stays. Nice little baby cage coming in from Arrow Man to stop the snowball to get themselves a disengage. Yeah, really good engage there from the Hippo. Great ultimate. They caught out Lux, but they did commit a lot to it. No Sejuani ult, no Orianna ult, and no Yumi ult for these for this upcoming team fight if they want to fight for anything. Um, pretty much means that the map is just going to stay this state and they're not going to really be able to get anything off of that kill. They didn't even get the mid lane turret that they were fighting for. Nope. We're 
also not going to talk about the Tristana build because it, it just doesn't make sense. Um, yeah, I am. I am very much not an ADC player. Um, but I'm pretty um, sure that is not correct. That is not a like, very standard. I can understand it on Tristana if you're going Blade first. But if you're going Infinity Edge, Rapid Fire Cannon is just so much better of an item on it. Yeah, I mean, I, I can't disagree with you, um, both because I think you're right and because I don't <laughs> I don't really know <laughs> much about ADCs. Um, but that build is definitely one I haven't seen too often. Um, but the benefit of it is with the Grievous Wounds from Executioner's Calling, um, that Runan's Hurricane will really spread that to everyone and make sure no one can get a bunch of healing from that Yumi. Yeah, because that's really the only healing you want to stop because Garen's, all of Garen's healing is outside of combat. Which is why I always get tilted when I see people buying Bramble Vests and Executioners when they're waiting against the Garen. Because it doesn't actually do anything. So it's going to come in, but a nice little slip behind the tower from Centric avoids any potential catastrophes coming in from there. Yeah, this is the sideline is getting to that point where Yorick is behind, but he just can't. Jax can't dive him. They're just kind of pushing waves back at each other. The game is getting into this four v four state that I was talking about earlier. Yeah, the Immortal Worlds of LS is there at a natural state of ping pong. Yeah, I mean that's exactly right. They're just kind of waiting. There, we got our four v four ARAM coming up. Um, Jax is going to have a really difficult time running up because of that control ward from the side of right state. So we're just kind of in a 4v4. Yeah, it basically comes down to whether or not right state chooses to pull a trigger again. Because when you look at the side of 10 minutes, they really haven't been the ones to make a lot of aggressive of plays when they're in this four-man setup. It's been primarily right state as... Uh, never ends. Is going in with the ultimate. Does have the spear of Soja coming in. Is going to get the counter strike cooldown back off again. Is going to do so much damage. Is going to fall, but Valkyrie has TP in. Is by himself. Does not get to execute damage with the ulti as never ends. Gets the double kill with the help coming in from Big Z's. However, Karn is going to try almost get caught out by Hippo. Light Binding is going to land on the back side. So it's a two for O trade in the bottom lane, which means a free push coming in from 10 minutes. Hippo, why are you passing there? You do not have any support here. Tetris going to get immediately shot, immediately engaged on Final Spark coming in from the backside. Is going to secure a double kill, essentially, for the side of right, of 10 minutes as right state is going to lose the team fight and multiple towers on the backside of it. Yeah, that's just, that's just disaster for the side of right state. Garen teleported into the bot lane um, but he didn't have Yumi with him and wasn't able to kill the Jax. Now, I need 10 minutes, gets the ace, and is just going to get a free Baron off of it. Yeah, and that's most likely just going to be the game from 10 minutes, assuming they perform this siege composition properly, because there's not enough wave clear on the side of right state to really maintain against the Baron Bush, because the only person with reliable wave clear is Imoriana. Yeah, and with the double uh, oceans from the side of I need 10 minutes, any poke that comes out from this Yumi or Orianna will be able to be healed up very easily. It will make it very, very difficult for right state to find anything against I need 10 Yeah, I mean, a lot of things can happen with the way these team fights are going, but on paper, like 10 minutes, this is their game to lose. Like, they have so many advantages. Centric's down two levels in the mid lane, they're down two levels in the bot lane, two levels in the jungle. They're just down so many levels across the board that it's going to make it incredibly difficult as the only person who's even on level is the Yumi. Yeah, and I mean, the Yumi, while being an important part, um, having her not behind and everyone else is, isn't going to make you win a team fight. So it is definitely very, very difficult for I need 10 minutes to be able to do anything. Um, they are just going to sit mid lane with Orianna wave clearing for a while and should be in a fine spot. Yeah. Well, 
Let's just have to see how. Oh, but that is a deadlock! Yes, yes it is. That is a very deadlock. <laughs> Um, I don't think they needed to commit the Oriana ult there. Um, it definitely helped, but not having that for this upcoming fight is going to be a little tough. Yeah, because they're missing all their crucial ultimates aside from the Garen ulti, which really doesn't do much in a team fight for you. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> Garen ulti is really great. Um, it's it's okay in the team fight, but that Oriana ult not having that is really gonna hurt them. They're just getting siege to death right now because they don't have enough wave clear. Yeah, I mean Garen, if he's not getting threatened, can do okay. But like without the engage threat, there really isn't too much. TP is coming in from Never, and Centrix is caught out of position. Depth shards is gonna come in. He's gonna get a double knockup. Centric is all by himself. Flash over the wall. Shockwave is gonna land on both the tanks, but Never ends. Coming in from the flank just eviscerates the two man left from Hippo and Centric, both getting taken off the map, as that's gonna be an, at least an inhibitor coming in for 10 minutes. Yeah, excellent flank there from Never ends, getting the sun off onto the key members. They should be able to just walk this down with Baron, but instead they are gonna look for mid lane. Definitely. They definitely could have tried. Um, I mean, Garen has ult and has Yumi, but that's a that's not too much when you have five people on your team that are ready to kill people. Yeah. I mean, the double inhib is the safer route, but when you have Jax Hook is going to land, never ends, is going to follow up, but the final chapter is going to buy the disengages. There's still a lot of CC onto the table. Shockwave onto three, but there's no follow-up damage as, as, the, as Karn is just sitting... On this, Jasana free firing, going into the back by dumping, hop skipping, jumping, playing Kingy all over ten, all over the side of right state. But he gets abandoned by himself. Is gonna get a double kill on the backside because he's just life stealing back up triple kill, trying to get the quadra kill. Does not have the jump back available to secure the quadra kill, as it is gonna be the ace and the game going over to ten minutes here. Just waiting for the minions to get into base. Card almost dies to the turret shot, though. Yeah, I, this was excellently played for my need 10 minutes. They used their engagers when they could. They took their side lane fights when they needed to. And they just didn't let York do anything this game at all. Yeah, the York pick was really the crux of the game. And it did not have much of an impact in the game. Yeah, he sat in the side lane and farmed, but... In comparison to what the Jacks contributed over the course of the game, it was just a night and day difference between the two teams. Yeah, that Jax had a surprise, or not even surprising, but he just had a 3k gold lead over everyone else on the enemy team. Um, he was very, very terrifying. It was not something you would want to deal with on a daily basis. Not, not, not fun. Definitely not fun to play against a Fed Jax once he's got Spear Shojin. No. Ugh. no, that is very low on my list of things I want to play against in solo. Yeah, I mean, and Oriana still played okay there. Um, would have liked to see more vision to keep her safe in the mid lane. Um, but Lux was just able to roam and get kills elsewhere aside from just in mid lane and was able to put so much pressure onto the map with ult. With that being said, we are going to cut into a short break, but we will see you right back here for Game 3.
back, everyone, to this pivotal Game 3 matchup here in the Dominate Pre-Made Week number 1. I am, once again, Rhymus alongside Wiveswap here, bringing you the last game here between Need 10 Minutes and Riot State here. Going to be interesting to see how both these teams approach the draft in this game because the draft ended up being a massive difference in both of the last two games. Yeah, very different drafts um, outside of a few picks like the Oriana. Um, in these first and second games, strong top performances from the side of I Need 10 Minutes. Both of them definitely was a huge factor in their win in the last game. It's interesting to see Wright State Raiders not prioritize getting their top laner or banning anything from the enemy top. Yeah, but the thing is that most teams aren't going to be looking to pick up the top laner in their first phase. It's generally going to come in the second phase, unless they're playing one of the OP flex picks. That is... So it's not so... That's fair. So it's not surprising to see them not throw any specific bans. Um, but it's interesting to see the Kaisa being first picked, as we are seeing Morgana, Jarman, and Alawi being banned from the side of the event, and then at Cinder, Yunu, and... Rush being banned on the other side, and I, I do think it's good that right six going back to the Caitlyn. Yeah, they found success with it in game number one. It wasn't the biggest reason why the game won game number one, but it was a big part. Yeah, Caitlyn definitely was very scary and helped neutralize that bot lane in the first. Really gonna have to look towards these jungle picks because two best performing junglers of the past two games, the Jarvan and Nunu aren't going to be picked. It does look to be the Karthus jungle. Um, could always be playing, but... Nope, nope. It's not Karthus. Huh. It was supposed to be Zyra Khan, apparently. Interesting. For, yeah, the first two picks are not Caitlyn Karthus, they are Zyra Khan. Dear Lord. Sometimes I wonder how people get out of bed in I mean, it's whatever. Um, it doesn't change the draft at all because they picked them at the same time. Oh, so it should be fine. Interesting poppy pick. That's some. Oh. I don't know. I don't know what's going on at this point. I'm, I'm just kind of keeping an eye on chat to see if anything else comes up because... One of the teams was not very happy about that. Yeah, um, I need 10 minutes is not very happy with that, but right, they did pick them before I need 10 minutes responded with anything. There shouldn't be an issue. I mean, it is definitely scuffed. You are not wrong. Because there's not really anything we can do here because we don't actually know what's being picked yet. <laughs> we don't know if this Iracon is being allowed through or not, or... That ban wasn't notified yeah, till. Not all this ban count. Yeah, that I don't think 
they're gonna make them follow that. That Cho'Gath is definitely not Cho'Gath. That was the last second pick as well. I don't know if they're planning on redoing draft, but looking very scoffed. Let's go. Draft has slowly devolved into chaos. They're just watching. Both teams are okay with a redraft, so it looks like that will be. That was very slow. things that it is helpful however everyone needs to be making sure they're paying attention to what is going on because you'll have situations like this happen yeah so this is something i think the draft has been given up on are getting a new spectate i think in general Put that up in our display very shortly. Very shortly, I mean right now. <laughs> um, right now. We should, we should be, be good. Understandable frustration. Both teams are looking to get into this game. They're not trying to wait around. But you know, it happens. It be like that. You just kind of got to roll with the punches. And... Not worry about it. So as so, just as a clarification for everyone, the draft is being entirely redone from starting from the Kaisa first bit. That is going through everything after that is being changed. Yes, that is that is correct. That is can get our. Just gonna get their Kaisa pick. Are we gonna pick Zyra Khan theoretically? Yes. Could have picked just Rakan and something else, but you know, it's whatever. Um, doesn't matter. They're picking the exact same pick. It, what? It, okay. All right. I'm okay. I'm not sure what the point of redoing it is if they're picking the exact same stuff, but. thing is I'm wondering where everything's going to end up going because is this going to be a poppy jungle? Is this going to be a support poppy? I am not sure. Support poppy does make sense in Rakan. It does seem like a niche counter pick, but they're just redoing the draft. The same draft. I'm not sure. We're just seeing the same draft come out now. Don't like into Poppy, but you know, it's whatever. Pantheon. Decent. Decent into Kled. Um a matchup as before except different top laner on Pantheon. How this works out for them. Yeah, basically this matchup I feel after watching the first one is entirely relied upon Pantheon waiting to level three before looking to fight. Yeah. Um? Okay, so that's a middling Kled, a top lane Poppy, and a jungle Ramus. I think it's Poppy support and Kled top. I think the Poppy support to counter Rakan jumping in. The Ramus, which is pretty good into the all AD. support they just decided to flip and pick Rambus before picking the Ari. 
So yeah, this draft didn't really change, but pretty darn it. it looks it looks a lot nicer, it looks a lot less soft. Um interesting going forward seeing how this will look. Yeah, like the poppy support is gonna do a lot to negate because it negates uh every uh, almost everything we're on this. It negates Zen Zhao. And I'm pretty sure it still counts, still blocks Pantheon W. Uh, um, because yes. Because I'm not sure how, if they if it's still coded as a movement ability, or if he just goes, if, or if he just, or if it's just point blank stun. So I'm not sure if the coding changed on that, but like hobby support is a very good pick here. Like it's a very weird pick in the sense that. I don't see a ton of synergy with Kaisa in terms of a bot lane duo, but it does give them a lot of disengage for what Right State is bringing to the table because Right State has no frontline in their composition. Yeah, Right State's comp is very much just go go go, and um, and the Rakan, or rather the Poppy, is gonna be able to do a lot to shut that down, um, and especially now that her. W also grounds target. It'll be very, very difficult to get a good engage. Yeah, it, it's going to be interesting to see how things play out in this game. Yeah, I'm just... Both these drafts are very unconventional, and I'm trying to think of how these are going to work out, but I'm not entirely sure. Right State Raiders has a little bit of peep. Sandra old and then all. Um, but they don't have much outside of Engage. Um, I need 10 minutes. Doesn't... Well, I need 10 minutes has more Engage and just... Um, but they're just... They're just interesting comps. Um, Ramus can't really do anything besides haunt someone. Um, oh, I'm and not... sit there and tank the entire team's worth of damage because Lissandra's not going to kill Aramis. Yeah. Yeah, he definitely definitely won't. Um, but if your Aramis is just in there chilling and the rest of your team is dead, it's not going to work out too much. Yeah, but that's what the poppy's for. That's fair, that's fair. Yeah, Ramus just engages and Poppy keeps everyone else safe. Um, With W, because you can't. You also have to understand that the uh, Poppy W is also a grounded effect as well. So, like, if someone gets knocked up by the W, they are also slow and they can't use another dash. Yeah, um, it'll be interesting how Ramus performs because him. He has this thing I like to call speed syndrome, um, where he forgets that everyone else can't catch up to him, so it's very easy to roll into someone and talk them, and then realize your team is still a half screen away, um, and you kind of just die. Now, I need 10 minutes, did play Hecarim, who has a very similar problem that can happen, um, and that didn't happen then, so I don't think it will happen here. but is um is very very concerning that Ramus might just kind of kind of roll in there on his own and then just not have any fun i mean he has the clad he has the r he has follow up with karns kaisa if they want to fully commit so like he does have follow up when he goes in that's fair he does have some long range follow up that should help him um but it's, it can always be it can always be a little rough if you know stuff isn't up and you make the wrong engage, which is very easy to do on a champion. Um, it's it's not like something like the Sejuani where you can you can throw your ultimate and engage, and if your team doesn't want to engage, just lose your ultimate. You're playing Ramus and you engage, and you besides this isn't the fight, you're pretty much dead. You don't have any mobility at that. Um, so it'll, it'll definitely be interesting to see how this jungle matchup goes. Um, 
Zin Zhao can bully Ramus a little bit early on. Once Ramus starts to get Ramble Vest and a couple items under his belt, can just stop Zin Zhao from killing people. Um, but I just feel like between Lissandra's slows and her root, um, it's going to be very difficult for Ramus to get on top of meaningful people. Get some actual work done. Yeah, and I do want to bring a quick mention here for our viewers at home is to make sure we both notice that both AD carries are actually choosing to take ones in this game. Which means neither of them are likely going to build QSSs, so we'll need to make sure in team fights we're keeping track of that all important cleanse cooldown. As we are getting into game here, we are going to take a very, very short break here or waiting for the spectator to really finish out. We will be back with you guys in just a few moments. everyone to the final game between need 10 minutes and Wright state raiders both teams have taken one game so far in this series Wright state is back on the red side which they won in a come behind game number one while in the last game a strong early game strong early to mid game performance coming in from the side of need 10 minutes allowed them to push this to an all important game number three here once again i am primus alongside wife swap here we got a lot of interesting things coming into this game here what's jumping out in to you um looking between these two teams here um i said did start doran a little bit interesting Gaia does output a, a decent amount of damage early on but I'm not sure if it warrants that. Um, and then the lethal tempo on Kaita as well is a little bit questioned. 
Yeah, like, I, I can understand why you would take it, but I just think objectively, for Kaisa specifically, PTA is just better. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I mean, with the way her passive works and everything, it just gives you a lot of damage. I feel like Kaisa's a little bit more burst, burst orientated than the lethal tempo um, Warren. Yeah, because she's she's essentially all about proccing her passive, and lethal tempo just like kind of help doing that, but you like you don't need the extra help doing that. You, you just need to have that extra little bit of damage. Just following is gonna be very interesting to see how it plays out because I'm curious to see how much Poppy's support Depressed has actually played to see actually how comfortable he is on this pick because this is a specific counter pick into the Zyra Conlay. Yeah, definitely. Poppy's support is definitely just something used against the Rakan to stop the stop the engage. Zhao is looking for a gank mid lane here. He doesn't have red buff. Yeah, doesn't have red buff. Isn't gonna be able to get anything out of out of Mathne. So just gonna be interesting to see how things play out in the early game, because if you are right set, so you definitely need to be pushing the tempo of this game and making plays, because you lack a true front line, and you have a lot less ability to play in side lanes, because you don't, really don't want your Lissandra matching against the clan. Yeah, Lissandra versus clan in the side lane would definitely not be great. Pantheon is getting decent amounts of poke down on the clan. Um... Hasn't died by three minutes, so definitely better than the Pantheon in the first game. Definitely an improvement there. Uh, that was just farming, Ramus is just farming, and we're having a pretty chill game to start this out for me. Yeah, Pantheon's off to a much better start this game, so... Going to be curious to see how... Um, that top lane match plays out in this game as opposed to the last as to the last time we saw this matchup. As neither jungler's really been able to do anything quite yet. Both are just kind of farming their way through the camps, which kind of benefits Ramus more than Zin Zhao. Because you have you have to feel like Zin Zhao's on a very hard timer to make things happen. Yeah, Zin Zhao is absolutely an early game jungler. Definitely wants to get something done. Um, isn't as cheese orientated as someone like a Camille or a Twitch, but really needs to get stuff working. Yeah, they are going to get the top of the immediate cleanse coming in. Nice use of the steadfast presence is going to buy a little bit of additional time, but a lot of trade damage is going to go back onto the depressed artist, but there's not going to be enough damage coming in to secure the kill. But that is cleanse and ignite down for the bottom lane, right state. Yeah. Ooh, but the root is gonna land. Cleanse is not gonna matter. I guess there's a knock of depressed artist should fall here. Last auto going in over to the Rakan as it's gonna be a 2v3 outplay coming in from right state, getting them that early game advantage in that bottom. Yeah, uh, just a little bit of an overstep from the side of I need 10 minutes. Now Zin Zhao is looking for this oh, Ramus. Oh, Big Z's really, really low. He is going to get flashed on, should just end up falling, and follow flash by Hippo just to ensure he gets that kill, as that's two quick kills over to right state. And this has been, this is a very impressive start coming in from right state, because they've, in the both of the previous games, have fallen behind in the early. Yeah, everything going the way of right state right now. Um, they get the kill bot lane in the outplay. Fortunately, it does go to Rakan. Zaya would definitely love that. But Zin Zhao does pick up that kill onto Ramus. Now Ramus, without Flash, is going to be ha gonna have to be really careful about where he decides to engage. Speaking yeah, he has... We are going to have a attempted engage in the top lane, but just the immediate Flash from Pantheon. I love seeing people who actually go for the early Flashes because it's much safer than... Just holding it and risk getting CC changed so you don't actually get the flash. Yeah, against the pull from Kled and the knockup and taunt from Ramus, you really got to flash early to ensure your safety. Botlane is rotating up here from I need 10 minutes. 
they don't see the control ward in their own jungle this is going to be a little bit rough but they're just trying to relieve some pressure from them. Yeah, right now it is favoring Macne a little bit, but Lissandra's one of those champions who's much more of a mitigation mid laner. And as long as she's able to get her item timings across, like she's always going to be useful as a champion. But the question is, is whether or not she's going to be able to hit those item timings and get her ultimates at the right time onto the right target. Because we have to remember that Karn has that cleanse, so if he uses that Lissandra ultimate when cleanse is available, that's just a way to an ultimate. Yeah, Everends is taking a couple of rough trades here. Um, I think he's still thinking back to that first game and how well that went for him. He's playing a little bit more aggressive than he needs to, but nothing big is happening. He was gonna back anyways, so that's all fine. Zhao is on the dragon right now, but is standing directly on a ward. Which is funny because they have control wards on either side. But they don't have one to see the ward there, but the bot lane's not in a position to follow up. Big Z's is able to disengage. Magni is here. It does have the ultimate. Is going to flash out as a nice wall start coming in. Ultimate is going to come in from Centric TP. Is coming in from Never Ends, but he is in all by himself. Fensstorm is going to come in and buy so much time. Card should get auto to death, but Never Ends is going to be able to get one kill on the backside. Does have the bear trap on the rope. Onto Valkyrie. Can he get the last auto off? No! Hippo comes in, saving his AD carry, turning the fight back in the favor of the side of right standing. Yeah, Kaisa almost sniped him on the end of that ordeal, but Kled uses TP, uses ult, uses flash, isn't able to get the kills, so that really hurts him in the looks the lane as well because now he's down cs he is down cs but he did get one kill out of it oh, so in bad. terms of in terms of raw gold he's equal still but the question oh that's a dead kaisa okay now he's not as equal in gold <laughs> pantheon does commit yeah, there's the now a 300 gold difference yeah pantheon does but Get the kill there. Yep, yeah, but it is going to allow uh, Neverends to get some chip damage onto that tower. Uh, because it's going to take some time for Pantheon to walk back into lane. Um, probably not going to be enough to get a turret plate, but it's going to get at least a healthy chunk down on that uh, onto that tower. Looking at the top lane, he actually managed to get the one plate. Um, he's pretty far into turret, but able to just dodge away. Zenzo is here, though. Yeah, Zenzo is here. No, never ends. Oh, he is gonna get face shake. The hail of blades is gonna get the uh, knock up proc. Never ends. Is trying to kite out. Ramus is coming up for coverage. Coverage. Can he do enough? No, he cannot. But Magne has rotated up from the mid lane. But Aramand doing a good job of trying to body it up. Put the shutdown onto the Zenzo. But here comes Centric. Centric trying to get into range. But Aramand secures the kill with the spear. Pierce right into the back. Yeah, two for one for the side of um, completely blanking on the name, something state. Right state. Right state, thank you. Um, <laughs> two for one for them. Pantheon got another kill off that. Zinzal got another kill off that. They're both looking very scary. Engage in the bot lane. Uh, don't know what that was supposed to do. Depressed is still not level six yet. So, it is down at least a full load of sweet potatoes. Like, in like if you're not getting the waltz on his poppy, like, you can't really go in aggressively like that. Yeah, they're just gonna keep chipping at this tower, get a second plate from it. Currently, Zinzao's up a thousand gold, and bot lane's up 600 gold on both members. They're looking very strong. Since I was starting up this dragon for the second time, this time not on a ward. That should be a pretty easy secure. Cloud Drake is always nice to have. Yeah, Cloud Drake is always nice to have. It's not the ideal Drake you want to get, but more movement speed is always a nice thing because it's one of the most underrated underrated stats in League of Legends. Yeah, and especially when you're engaged is the Rakan. Um Having that extra movement speed to be able to catch people with the quickness, always good to have. 
Pantheon double buffs is scary. Yeah, but it looks like they are trying to set up a three-man collapse onto Araman. Never ends is going to do and doing a whole bunch of damage to Araman, who was not able to get the flash charge, is going to force the flash out of him. Um, they try to trade for the bot lane tower as the press just lets the timer run out on the ulti. He is going to miss the charm matinee, not quite enough damage from the Order of Deception to secure the kill on the back side. So it looks like it is still going to be first tower going over in the favor of right state as they're just getting so much tower damage in all the lanes they're not going to be able to quite secure the bot lane tower but they are getting a lot of chip damage on the mid lane tower as well right now yeah got a lot of plates there lissandra's in a little bit of danger but just walks away uh top lane turret might be falling here it looks like it will centric is caught out he's just dead Uses the ultimate, which lets them give it over to Kaisa. Um, pretty nice, pretty generous there. Kaisa is going man immune, so not seeing the storm raises build from the first game. Yeah, so it, it's going to be much more of an AP Kaisa build coming in, which is the better build on her right now. Um, just because you get so many free defensive items, like there's just no reason for you to not go the AP Kaisa build right now. Yep, and. Kaisa has that stopwatch, which will make her Zhanya's a little bit cheaper. Always nice to have. And it gives you a little bit more of baiting potential and playmaking potential. So we do see a lane swap coming in um, with them looking for that early rift hero. So despite the fact that Need 10 Minutes was able to secure the top lane tower, they are not going to be able to get the position onto the rift hero. Featherstorm is going to be forced out. Never Ends is eating a lot of trade damage as they are fighting to secure the trade. Don't know who it actually went over to. It did uh, over to the side of right safe, but how many of them will they lose? As Sweet Potatoes is able to W over the wall, a lot of damage is going to go on to Arrowhead down in the bottom lane. They are going to secure the kill onto Big Z to equal out the trade a little bit, but that's still two for one. But Rift Herald does go over to the side of right state. Yeah, Rift Herald there is going to be really nice. Unfortunately, they can't use it for first turret or plates because Xin Zhao died. But it will be nice to secure some turret gold. Pantheon's in a little bit of danger, but almost kills Poppy. Yeah. That was a little bit risky, to say the least, coming in from the press artist right there. Um, not having the Aftershock up, going for an aggressive trade under tower. Is just gonna die here. Little late on the W interrupt. Did have a nice keeper's verdict though, um, to ensure that the kill went on to Hippo. Hippo did have to burn a slash um, to make that play though, but that should be bot lane tower following here. There's not too much HP left on it. Arrows. Oh, didn't die there. Okay, they they're getting collapsed on mid. Mid lane, they are able to get a nice disengage with the ring of flash with the taunt and so much burst damage coming in from never ends. But Centric is able to get away with the glacial pass, so that's only Valkyrie falling who did not have that cleanse up after that after that play around the rift hero. Yeah, not having cleanse up and ultimate not being up yet means it's very easy to get caught out with the lead flanking. Doesn't look like much will come off of that um maybe this turret but it's very healthy so i don't think it will looks like it won't yeah yeah it's just more of trying to get some tempo and gold back for the side of need 10 minutes because they do have a better overall team composition but they do need some gold to allow themselves to get back into the game. Charm and a lot of chunk damage is going to land on the Sweet Potatoes. Yeah, Xin Zhao just summoning the Herald, though. Should hopefully be able to kill this turret before it charges. So that gets that beefier charge onto the first one. But they're just rotating down to Dragon and are content with this. Yeah, they just wanted to make sure they broke broke the mid lane out of tower. It gives them a lot more flexibility. Drum around the map, looking for skirmishes which is where their composition well and truly shines. They really don't want to fight in straight 5v5, 5v5 situations. Yeah, and they, they do secure that second Cloud Drake and the mid lane turret. 
currently sitting at about a two a half ish gold lead um pantheon's looking pretty healthy zinzao's got a lot of gold on him um lissandra's up about 500 as well all across the board aside from the top lane actually um right state is ahead in gold blood does have an 800 gold lead for himself but he is going that ghost blade build again and i mean again it's slightly understandable because there's no true frontline on the side of right state but like again i would still prefer still prefer to see um more tanky items because you are the primary like hp frontline like yes ramus will be very tanky due to his passive and the amount of armor he has he's not going to be like super tanky until he gets his first hp item because that's when cinder hulk becomes well effective is once you build your first item first hp item that's when it becomes gold efficient as an item They are going to try to jump onto Never Edge. It's going to use the charge to disengage. That is a major cooldown being forced of 10 minutes. It's not a terribly long cooldown, but it is going to be a little bit while, a little while before they can run recklessly into the enemy team. Yeah, they do just kind of uh, force those cooldowns out, which is always good. They are pressuring towards this top side, but there's not really anything up. Not really any objectives on the map. Baron's not up for two. Dragon's not up for three. So it'll be interesting to see if we get into a little bit of a lull state or what. Who is in Zao engaging? Oh, the delayed bait, but Hippo is able to get the ultimate off, so it's going to live for a little bit longer than anticipated. But a lot of damage being traded back and forth. Redemption is going to get Sweet Potatoes alive. Can he get back over the wall? No, he cannot as he gets slammed in the wall by the press artist Valkyrie is trying to cut out Big Z, but that is one tanky, tanky ramp. They are going to chip him down in the end, so both junglers fall in the team fight, as well as hop and support, so it's a two-for-two two trade in the end. Yeah, Lissandra and Kled were fighting down there in the bottom for a little bit. Um, Lissandra was unable to TP because of that, but she did pick up the solo kill onto the Kled. Always nice. Yeah, which is kind of weird because that's not something I would anticipate happening. Um, albeit with the club not having any Merc treads or any CC reduction, um, I can kind of see how that would be because Alessandra is sitting at a very strong item break point right now where she has uh, at least 30% CDR, uh, plus she has Proto Belt and all of her bursts from their kit. And that is a lot of HP to chew through with the uh, club passive, but... Lissandra does do a lot of damage if she's able to get him. Yeah, and they're looking for the Kled again. He does have ult this time. Can't be disabled during it. They are unable to use ult. A little DC going on. Yeah, so hopefully it'll resolve relatively quickly so we can get back into game here for you guys. But it, it wouldn't be a cast where I'm here, where there is, if there wasn't at least one boss. Nope, oh, there's always, always gotta be one. It's just how Risen goes. Um, fun fact, during our Rampage pre-made stream on Friday night, we had a player DC, and there was no pause. They just continued playing until he resumed. So, it's good to see that these Dominate pre-made teams read the rules a little bit more, understand how they work, and do use that pause so that they don't get at a disadvantage. Yeah, so hope that we'll, we'll see how long this pause takes and see if that has any effect over how the game plays out because I always find it interesting when these pause come through to see how teams respond. Um, because uh, what I would like, what I like seeing from teams is teams that come out with a concrete plan out of the pod, and they look to execute it on immediately because teams might not necessarily be ready for something immediately after coming back out of the pods. Yeah, pauses can be a little bit tough towards mental. Um, 
can definitely make you forget the timer. I'm gonna just generally air everyone is on the map. Um, but with the current state of where everyone is on the map, I don't really see any surprise engages happening. It should just go back to farming and waiting for Baron, which spawns 17 seconds. Yeah, almost to that all important Baron spawn. Both teams have a fair bit of Baron damage, um, but as I said earlier, the side of Bright State doesn't have a true tank to tank up the Baron. So any attempt that they make to try to do the Baron is going to be a little bit suspect because they don't have that stable front line to effectively tank the damage. Yes, Araman does have his E to tank for a little bit, but everyone on their team does Baron DPS outside of the Rakan, and the Rakan's not going to have that big of a health bar. Yeah, I mean, you you hit that right on, hit that nail right on the head. You're completely right there. Um, they do still have decent Barons. Both teams do. Um, no mountains been picked up, so still both relatively slow. Um, it, the Baron Hall is probably a little bit healthier for the side of Bright State Raiders, just because um, Zinzao can tank it and he heal himself off of it. But other than that, it'll, it'll be interesting just to see where this goes. So just as a little update, um, just waiting on, I'm assuming, a PC restart to come through for, their, for the support on the side of 10 minutes. So once that happens, we'll get back into the game for you guys. So, as you mentioned, we're almost at 20 minutes into the game. Um, taking a look at the gold between the two teams, um, we have 1800 gold advantage in the jungle, even gold in the mid lane, essentially even gold between the bot lanes. A um, little bit more over to a little bit of a gold lead towards the Rakan of about 600 gold, um, but not a huge deal. Top laners, 300 gold difference. So this game is still very tight with a large amount of the discrepancy being both junglers, but when you look at the two junglers, Ramis inherently has a lower item threshold to be an effective champion than Zen Zao does. Yeah, and we will be getting into very shortly here. Both teams hit the ready up, pausing any second. But in the meantime, is there anything that stands out, looks interesting? Oh, they are unpaused. That the world didn't explode during our pause. That, that's about it. <laughs> so we do see just teams posturing around Vision right now. Um, I'm going to be curious to see. Okay. I'm assuming it's basing for Rageblade right now, which is a very important item spike. Nias Charm is going to get a lot of damage onto Hippo, but the Follow Flash... Onto the Spirit Rush is going to do a lot of damage that is going to give them Baron side control while Centric does have that TP available and is continuing to push in the bottom line. Yeah, Centric is starting to put in work on these side lanes, getting a lot of CS for himself and pushing in, drawing a lot of attention too. That's three members down towards the bot lane um, and should be a pretty easy Baron call here for the side of right state. If they're choosing to go for it, but it looks like they're just choosing to take the top lane tower, which I disagree with because you're con conceding inside track on the on the Infernal Drake. And, I mean, yes, if the game doesn't go late enough, it doesn't matter. Your immediate gold influx that you're going to get um, from taking both these top lane towers is going to be quite massive if you're able to finish them off. Yeah, I'm... I mean, they do get the two turrets. I'm not sure if they're going to look to rotate towards Baron now. Um, but it looks like they're looking for a fight mid. Yeah, they want to try to catch them out. Get reestablished mid lane priority here. Um, bet Big Z is going to try to go in, but he just taunts up the Pantheon, who is a little bit tanky. Root is going to come through. Onto the press artist, knockup is gonna land, but the immediate stun into Wasi Potatoes gets bursted out by the Kaisa, following up with Makan. 
It's Killer Instinct coming in on the backside. They're trying to go on into the backline as Magnate secures one kill onto the Zaya. Cedric is all by himself in the backline. Is going to be able to get one kill, but he gives up his life for it. As that is a team fight win for the 10 minutes. Yeah, a one for three for the side of them. They also got the Inferno. They're pushing mid lane here. Gonna get one, maybe two turrets. That's just a pretty good play from them all around. Yeah, they chose the right team fight. They were able to burst the target out extremely low before the fight started. And then they were able to get their damage down onto the priority targets. But the fight is still not over as we're going to see a re-engage coming in from the side of right state. They are going to do a fair bit of damage coming in, but they haven't locked down secure the kill. Hippo is going to secure the kill. Onto Karn on the back side and the snipe coming in from the side of Arrowman. But Arrowman is going to fall as it's going to be a triple kill in the end of Never. It's Centric has TP'd in from base, is going to try to provide the CC down. So Valkyrie can try to secure the kill. Big Z has respawned as well as these fights just do not want to stop. As I believe in the end, that was a three for three re-engaged play coming in between both teams. Yeah, Lissandra unfortunately didn't have ult to stop the Clud. Um, but did pick up nice kills for himself. But they do end up getting advantage towards the side of right state just because... They killed the people later on, so they're they're down for longer. But it's really just posturing towards this Baron. We've got good vision from right state that is set up in that area. That is really just trying to choke them up. So he's doing the build again. Who's doing the oh. And he's Oh. Okay. I'm not sure how I feel about that. Actually, I am sure I how mean, I feel he, about if, that. It's not good. I mean, if he's split pushing, like I can, I can understand it a teeny tiny bit. But if he's looking to be their deep fight engage, it is not an optimal. But here comes the spear. A charm is gonna get, is going to land onto Valkyrie. A nice little re-engage by Sweet Potatoes is gonna buy a little bit of time, but the killer instinct goes into the backside of Sweet Potatoes. Is going to fall, never ends getting engaged on him on the other side of the map. It is going to fall as it's a one for one so far across the map with neither team really getting a true advantage. Yeah, and the Sandra does still have ultimate up, so there it's used. They are going to get the catch on to Big Z, but the charm is going to buy a little bit of time. But Hippo on the flank is going to be able to lock down to secure that kill, turning it a two for one. With the jungler being dead, they can potentially look to do the Baron, but they do not have vision control of it. Yeah, Kaisa does just recall, so this should be pretty safe for the side of right state. Ramus isn't up for 20 seconds. Not sure how much damage Ari can do. She does have ultimate up, but TP is available on the Kled. Kled does TP in, yeah. He is coming in as there is a large engage onto Magne. Is gonna take a lot of damage. Never ends in the middle of the team, but he just doesn't do enough damage. Depressed Artist is going to secure the kill on the Centric, but he is going to trade his life for it as Never End just TPs into his death. As that has to mean Baron coming in for the side. A little snipe coming in from Arrowman. Arrowman is being on point with those spears. Yeah, they should. He should rename to Spearman after that. That was pretty well done. The blind snipe there gives him more control over Baron. Ramus is very far away. Don't think he can contest this. Nice little killer instinct to buy a little bit more space, but Karn's just not going to survive, but he does buy a little bit more time of Baron. Ramus is alive, but does not have Flash. They keep going back to the Baron rather than just finishing it. Yeah, I think at this point, there's nothing Ramus can do by the time he gets there. He'll probably be gone. They are taking it relatively quickly. Got a lot of feathers to pull. But they don't know where Ramus yeah. is. Yeah, there doesn't look like they're... Oh, but the charge is coming in, and they're not going to get the Baron. But the Baron is still leashed. No. Okay, so ten, it, it is still leashed. It's still hovering at about 3k. has not reset. Looks like it is just finally resetting. So, team sat around Baron for about 90 seconds, and neither team decided to uh, actually bite the bullet and finish the Baron. Yeah, I feel like Right State definitely could have there. They did still have the Zim Zao ult, so once Kled ults in onto you, you just kind of knock him away and finish finish the Baron. 
Um, they do decide to go for the safe play and back off, which is understandable. The side of uh, I need 10 minutes is getting the down in Drake, which will help them take it out. But the uh, right state doesn't really have a response. Yeah, and Zaya's sitting on a couple very big items, doesn't have her zeal item yet, but does have her big AD items coming through, which is a very big item spike coming in for the Z for the Zaya. We almost have the Zanyas completed onto Karn, so both AD carries are becoming quite strong right now. Both mid laners are sitting in a good spot. Keeper's Verdict is going to knock out Centric, so it's going to reposition and waste that cooldown. Big Z is doing Ramus things. Yeah, I mean, that's what I'm talking about, that just rolling around, just kind of chilling. They're not doing too much. But, I mean, it is why everyone plays Ramus. They want that speed. They want to feel like they're they're drifting around. and Sonic the Hedgehog. Yeah, I mean, definitely. Um, These teams still just fighting over Vision for Baron. Not really doing too, too much at all. A little, little bit a little bit interesting. Yeah, I would like the teams to play the side lanes a little bit more, try to make plays and try to spread the map rather than just continually going to the same objective. Um, the Smith Lane Tower is going to fall extremely low. That's essentially one minion wave push from falling uh, for 10 minutes there. So if if the side of right state's able to get a tempo advantage, it can very easily secure that mid lane tier 2 tower, which is going to give them a lot more uh baron control because it's a lot farther for the for the side of need 10 minutes to fall back to their base yeah and i mean they are just kind of pushing around it's pretty much just an aram around baron pit they do get the mid lane turret just from the minion wave lissandra's pushing a little bit has teleport in case she needs it but the side of i need 10 minutes is just kind of looking for a bush cheese right now boo -doo, boo -doo, boo -doo. They ruined it. They did. They needed to wait. They needed to wait till they got closer before looking for the before fishing for pick CC. Yeah, and this just gives more vision control to the side of right state. But is now in the bot lane, pushing against Lissandra, but he doesn't have teleport. So Lissandra can does have them. charge, so as long as he can get to the mid lane, he is able to get to a fight. Large chunk of damage is going to go on to Sweet Potatoes. That is going to inhibit him from being able to engage um, because he does, unless he wants to burn that redemption cooldown because he's going to pretty much just go in and get insubversed right now at his current HP value. Yeah, I mean, they're just... They got to be really, really careful. This... Xin Zhao, this Rakan are not very tanky at all. They really have to be careful with their positioning if they're trying not to die. Oh, they're just starting up the Baron. They did see a couple bags come through. They're trying to burst this down. Xin Zhao is up, does not have flash available though to get in the bit. TP coming coming in from behind. Grand Skyfall is going to zone. Nice ulti from Centric. It's going to buy a lot of time. Depressed Artist trying to do what he can in the front line. Big Z trying to do what he can as well. Lots of tank being a eating a lot of damage but it's just not enough karn is barely able to escape with the killer instinct and the flash as well as the Zanyas, but is going to get jumped on by sweet potatoes almost gets sniped out he's one more auto as potatoes secures the kill as it is a team fight win in the end for the side of right state a two for oh plus maybe finally the baron yeah an excellent steadfast or keeper's verdict rather from poppy um to knock away some of the members of right state but in the end it didn't matter Lissandra was able to just teleport and immediately ult zone everyone off from going that way and really pinch them into a tough position that they couldn't get out of so this Zaya has her ultimate lens USS and now Rakan also has a Mikhail's crucible to make sure that this Zaya can do whatever she wants and not die I, I, or anyone on their team for that matter yeah i mean that is that's a lot of a lot of um peel or rather cleanses ish because zaya also does have qss so she right. has cleanse, a qss and the chaos right and if and, and her ultimate 
<laughs> like, I, I think that's a tiny bit excessive at that point, but... Oh, never ends. It is gonna face check into the entire right state team. So much damage coming through out of this Zaya, as this is gonna be at least two kills going over to the side of right state. Plus the Infernal Drake coming in on the backside, but the Sun is gonna go in onto Karn. Knockup is gonna miss. Taun is gonna land onto Sweet Potatoes. Is gonna be able to get out, but they do secure a final kill on the backside. That's a three for O oh for the side of right state. Yeah, just excellently done team fight there by right state. Uh, Kled face checked and they really made him punish. They got everything they wanted. Good quickness from Rakan. Good engage from everyone on their team. Solid lockdown. Solidly keeping everyone alive. This is well played team fight. They have Xin Zhao secure the, the Infernal Drake while they're pushing in. And this more than likely looks like a game victory for Riot State. They do have a minion wave being prepped. By Hippo in the mid lane, they can potentially look to take one more inhibitor with this Baron buff as they do still have a little bit of time left on it. Yeah, I they still got this Baron looking to siege a little bit, take the red buff from the side of I need 10 minutes. They don't have a wave anymore. Baron should be running out relatively. I think they have one more wave of Baron. Might be, but Ari is Recalling. She completes her stun. She has no. She's had her stun. She's just some buy anything. She might have bought a little lick. So, nope. Not sure. Maybe just trying to heal up. Yeah. Uh. Ooh. Ooh, Spear Rush is burned. They're not able to get the charm. Zanya's burned as well on nothing. So that's a lot of important cooldowns being blown by the mid laner coming out of need 10 minutes. That should be enough to allow right state to force down this inhibitor because they do not have those crucial abilities available on their mid lane. Yeah, right state still has everything up and missing a few ultimates on the side of I need 10 minutes always hurts. Ramus is looking for an engage. Yeah, that's the final inhibitor tower. They have to fight now or they lose the game. Hippo eats a lot of damage. Is going to go in using the ultimate to buy as much time as possible. Is going to be still alive with the Guardian prop. Never ends going in trying to do it again. But Karn on the backside is assassinated by Valkyrie. Valkyrie trying to cut out. Nice play. Karn's going to buy a little bit more time. Never ends not quite able to get the kill on the backside as it's a team fight ace coming in for the side of Wright State who will take the series 2-1. to one. Yeah, excellently done by the side of Wright State in this game. We're able to get a couple leads and really close out this game. Yeah, just very well played coming in from the side of Wright State. They had a very strong comeback in the first game, and then this game they were pretty much in control of the game from start to finish. They had a couple missteps throughout the course of the game, but a just very strong performance overall coming in from yeah, it will be interesting to see where these teams go in Dominate Premade and how they play throughout their next couple of weeks. I Need 10 Minutes definitely did play pretty well. Um, they definitely had chances to get the 2-0 if they closed out that first game a little bit better. But props to Wright State for sticking with it and being able to fight back. Yeah, just welcoming in from them. Nothing... Nothing too unexpected coming in for both these teams as Wright State is going to move 1-0 oh on the season here in the Dominate pre-made in the first week. While unfortunately for me, 10 minutes, they are going to fall to 0 and 1. There's still a lot of season left to be played. I hope you guys will be along for the ride the rest of the season. I'm Primus. He's Wife Slop. You guys have a great night.